We're here with Lady Demons co-head coach Brooke Storr on the eve of the first visit to Prather Coliseum in 31 years by Louisiana Tech. Coach, you obviously have a lot of history with uh, the program up in Ruston. How has this weekend been as you guys move from the win against Letourneau into a game where you're coaching at home against your alma mater? I don't think it's any different. I mean, yeah, it's a familiar opponent because, you know, I went to school there, but I, I'm old and the game has certainly changed. Women's basketball has changed since I played. Their program's changed. This program's changed. So I think it's completely different. Um, we look at it as the next opponent on our schedule. And um, I was able to watch film Friday night when I got home, break that down. Uh, we had an early film session Friday or Saturday morning practice following that. Um, had, a, had a good workout yesterday. So um, we've just taken it as the next game on the schedule. Um, we are trying to get better, and we've talked a lot about um, how do we prepare ourselves for a conference uh, tournament and conference season run. And you do that by taking these next 10 to 11 games and getting better every single day. And um, you know they've got a they've they had a nice win over SFA at SFA on Saturday. I was able to watch that online and. Um, we've since gotten the film and broken that down, so we'll know what to do. We feel like we have a good game plan going in, and um, we've got to do a great job in transition and stopping their um, athletes from getting to the rim and keeping them off the free throw line. Does it help, I guess, uh, going back to the personal side of things, does it help having played them at Ruston last year? Um, that was probably the worst game we played all year, so we kind of try to forget about that. Um, I don't. Our players don't look – I mean – Everybody would want to talk about that because that's where I went to school and that's where Coach Mike went to school, but we don't look at it that way. We look as the next opponent. Our, our players don't care about that. You know, their players don't care about that. Um, it's about going out and performing and, and having our team be the best they can possibly be. And I think our, we had a very, very good practice yesterday and I was pleased with our energy and our focus and our concentration. And they'll be ready to play, whether we're playing um, Duke or uh, Louisiana Tech or Letourneau, they're going to be ready to play. And um, it's about going out and executing and getting better. Um, and I think that they'll do that. When you looked at the uh, Louisiana Tech the SFA game, what did you see from Louisiana Tech? It's a first year coach in Tyler Summit, uh, similar to the situation you faced with Letourneau, a first year coach. Uh, maybe not a lot of tape on, on them as coaches or a lot of no, knowledge of their style, but what did you see from this year's version of the Lady Texters? Well, they knocked down some outside shots. You know, I think that you know the thing that I saw from them is they were very similar to SFA. It was almost like watching uh, mirrored teams. Very athletic, want to get up and down the floor, uh, play an up-tempo style. Um, they were able to hit some outside shots, and I think that that's something that you know maybe last year's team wasn't as consistent with. Um, but they have they have five starters back and four of their you know leading scorers back from last year's team. So they have the ability to score. Their perimeter went 18, 16, and 16 from the field. Um, and, and their interior players, I thought, did a nice job on Porsche um, for uh, Roberts for SFA. Um, but I think that, you know, you're going to see them get out and try to defend and overplay passing lanes and, um, you know, kind of typical old school man-to-man. -man. They switched up their defense. I thought, you know, the going to his own at the under four, the last media, I thought that threw SFA off, and I'm not sure that um, they handled that very well. And so I thought that was probably a very good call for them to go to that zone um, coming out of that timeout. And I thought it really, um, I believe it was a two-point game at that point, and it really turned the tide for Tech and um, helped them uh, secure a victory. You touched on the balance of their scoring around the perimeter. You guys put four players in double figures in the win against Letourneau, including a couple of people, Presley Owens, a career high 14 points. Amy Staha, career highs across the board offensively for what she's done. Uh, it seems that both of those players really made strides in the offseason. You've touched on them before. And not only that, they took it out on the floor in a game that mattered. Well, I think so. Just being able to get in front of a crowd and in front of um, another team. You know, we had those two close scrimmages. So it's different to go compete and, and perform in those um, and then when the lights come on. And so I was pleased with them being able to do that. Um, I think their consistency uh, throughout the season is going to be what uh, helps propel us, you know, in a, in a conference uh, season, in a conference tournament. But I think the biggest thing for them is just having that game experience. You know, Staha didn't play much last year coming off the knee injury and really kind of worked her back in, gosh, late in the season. So um, this is almost like her freshman year. So she can really shoot it. So I think just getting that confidence of that game experience out there is really good for her. We talked about it Friday night after the game. Janelle Perez took two shots, didn't make any, didn't score. But 
as a, as a point guard yourself, your playing days, an eight to one assist to turnover ratio, you'll take that every time. Oh, absolutely. You know, we've talked to Jadelle about being more aggressive on the offensive end because she is she could score, and um, she didn't need to score the other night. We saw a lot of zone, so when you play the top of the zone, you're really looking to distribute and um, create for others. And uh, she was able to do that and did it beautifully. And um, she she's our catalyst. You know, she keeps us. Um, keeps us moving and, and has great tempo on the offensive end for us and so she'll do that for us I think we're gonna you'll see her have an increased um, offensive role as as far as scoring the basketball as we move forward you guys hit the road after Louisiana Tech you go play at Arkansas it's gonna be a really good test to go to an SEC venue it'll be a TV game again a chance for some of these newcomers to play under a different set of lights and again to not bel belabor the point of the store reunion tour but you go back to your home state yeah, it's fun. You know, I think my hogs are really excited. We got a victory over LSU um, this weekend, broke that SEC game, uh, 17 game losing streak. But uh, it's been interesting kind of thinking back to that of building a foundation. You know, Jimmy Dykes is doing the same thing right now at Arkansas. He's got nine players on his roster, not a very deep roster, um, very similar to um, in terms of maybe not talent level, uh, definitely not talent level, but in terms of numbers and, and kind of where you're starting from um, as you build a program is what we did two years ago. And I think that um, I think he's going to do it the right way. And um, he's a guy that they brought in to rejuvenate the fan base and just really get those kids to buy in and, and believe in what they're doing. And I think they'll do a nice job. They've got a great 6'3 uh, uh, forward in Jessica Jackson um, was freshman of the year in the SEC last year is a difficult, difficult matchup for a lot of people. Can score inside out, very versatile, can put it on the floor. Um, a tough matchup. Well, she'll be a tough matchup for us. So um, a senior point guard in Callie Berna um, has experienced SEC play. Um, but again, you know, I think there's some thing, areas that we can, can exploit. And I think, um, you know, we'll, we've got a good plan already worked up going into that game. And um, our players get excited about going and playing those games. I think if you look back to um, going to Baylor and Texas and um, Arkansas and um, uh, Oklahoma, you know, the first two years, Ole Miss, um, Mississippi State, they like playing in those arenas. You know, they like playing in the, on the big stage. And I think it's we've had some of our better games, maybe not an end result as far as a score, but we've had some great offensive ed execution, and I think it prepares us um, for conference play. And from a purely statistical standpoint, like you talked about, it seems Beatrice Atura has been one that really, when the lights shine, bright as she delivers some of her best games. I think so. You know, she, she came in for us at Baylor last year, and um, I think it was her career high scoring. Um, obviously, a Texas kid, you know, from the Frisco area going back home um, to the DFW area and, and playing well on the big stage. She has an aggressive attacking mentality, and um, she really relishes that role. And um, I think we're going to, you know, we've talked to her about being more consistent, you know, throughout the season, whether we're playing at Tennessee in the NCAA tournament, at Baylor, um, at Oklahoma, at Arkansas. Be consistent, you know, whether it's Letourneau or Louisiana Tech or LSUA, you know, it's um, let's be consistent with that aggressive attacking mentality. But um, I look forward to, to going to Arkansas on, on Sunday and um, seeing a lot of family and having our kids compete in front of, um, in front of those fans. Thank you, Coach.